prize or the next thing we're going to look at. And remember, we're looking at various types of collections. Uh, you can think of them as sets. Uh, so I'm going to keep track of a set of strings. We saw maybe a binary search tree. We'll start off with linked lists um, and list structures. Binary search tree improves on access time, um, keeping them balanced. Uh, using hash tables uh, improves on access time even further, but loses the idea to do a range scan. Uh, and then we even saw bloom filters uh, improves the space usage dramatically with a couple of pretty dramatic drawbacks of a false positive rate uh, and the inability to actually retrieve strings from the collection, just a yes or no is it in the set. So, uh, and those can be not just strings, those can be of, of any data type. And I'll be similarly for try, but I'm gonna phrase this in terms of strings. And I think first I'm gonna show some examples. This is uh, from University of San Francisco. David Gallus has a whole bunch of awesome visualizations. So we'll put in, let's go ahead and put in cat into our tree. And it's gonna go, and it's gonna make something that kind of looks like a, I guess a tree, but since we only have um, a single letter sort of a node, it's, Looks like a list so far, but we can put in some other things here. I'm going to put in a cab as well. And it's going to go and find that we already have a CA. And here's the interesting thing. We're storing the strings cat and cab, but we're sharing the representation of the C and the A. So we're not duplicating that like we did in all our other data structures. In all our other data structures, if we had these strings, well, not bloom filters. But, um, if you had cat and cab, the CA would get repeated. And if you had a lot of things that were like that, say we had the word cabby, uh, we can go ahead and uh, insert that. And the CAB we can share entirely with cab and the CA is also shared with cat as well. So we can put in some other thing in there. We'll put in cats, plural. And now you can sort of get some idea of, of what, the, uh, what we're seeing here. I want to try as well, um, how about chat. Um, notice that once we hit the CH, we can't really share anything. Uh, you can see the title is a prefix tree. We're sharing prefixes. And once the prefix diverges, the AT, even though we had you know, the AT in cat and in chat, we're not sharing that representation. Um, although you can think of ways to try to, to do that. We're not gonna think about that here. Um, okay, so Gosh, uh, so that's the basic idea of a try. Uh, I call it try. Uh, it's actually, I think that's the standard way people pronounce it. Uh, originally, it comes from the word retrieval, T-R-I-E, from the middle of retrieval. That's what the authors claimed it as. Uh, but nobody says tree because that would be too confusing. So we call this a try. Okay, great. So tries are good ways to represent the data where we can um, overlap the representation, uh, share the representation of many of our letters. I think about, hey, I want to keep a dictionary of all the letters and all the words in the English language. Okay, I'm a spell checker, right? I have 20,000 words or 50,000 words or however big your active vocabulary is that you want to check. Um, yeah, so we can go and uh, I could just have a linked list. I could have a balanced binary search tree, but there I have a lot of words and there's a lot of shared prefixes going on. Um, so I might store it as a tree internally. That's my go-to uh, internal case for these things. Okay, so uh, yeah. How do we represent this? How do we write this in a program? So the idea is pretty clear. Uh, well, we clearly have some sort of tree structure here. Let me do something to make sure we have, we have C, we have three branches here after CA. So let me do, uh, how about CAD? U CAD, U bounder. Um, Okay, and of course you could do other things too. Uh, we put in cadenza. Okay, so what are we gonna, how are we gonna actually store this? Um, my first way of thinking about this, the first way that I was introduced to that sort of, I think uh, shows, shows my view would be, hey, maybe I'll have an array of size 26 at each of these nodes, it's not being drawn. So I might have something that looks kind of like, like this, okay? So, and again, I, I just did A through E, not, uh, not 26 letters, but just five. Okay, and 
Yeah, so I'll have this array, and each element of the array is a reference to a whole nother try below it, a whole nother sub try. So, okay. Yeah, and I, I can go ahead and do that. That would certainly be one way of doing it. Um, and it's, it's reasonable, especially if you have a lot of shared things. If the words that I have on my screen here were the only words that I had, this cab, cad, cat, chat, uh, you can see it's a little bit weird. I don't have any letters starting with anything but C, so that if I had an array of 26 letters up at my root, yeah, that would be mostly empty. Uh, there, there aren't any children for most of those nodes. Okay, so it might be a little bit wasteful if I don't have really full, uh, a, a lot of fan out at a certain node. If I don't have about 26 letters, using an array of size 26 is maybe uh, overkill. Um, okay, so what else could I use? Various things, I think the, the second thing that jumps to my mind is, hey, I'm gonna use a, a hash table. So this node here that corresponds to um, CA, yeah, I'm like, okay, if you're sitting at this node here and you get the next letter you wanna look up, uh, hey, look up either B or D or T in your hash table and you'll get the subtree that you want to go to. And if you try looking up Z, like, oh, no, nope, nothing sort associated with the, with the value Z. So I could use a, a, a hash table of letter to the subtry that goes with it. Uh, that would work as well. And that would be fairly space efficient. Uh, I start with a hash table of size one and, and double it as I need it uh, to keep the load factor low. And yeah, I'm probably going to be doing pretty well. Um, so, and I can probably fine tune a hash function uh, that works pretty well for that. I only have 26 letters or you know, 256 uh, different bytes that might be coming in there. And I might know that some of them are more popular than others. Okay, so that's the other thing that occurs to me. Uh, but you could have other things too. I think if you look in Wikipedia, they suggest, hey, just keep a linked list of all your subtrees. Uh, so a linked list, actually it's a linked list of a key, a single letter and the subtree associated with that. So if you're sitting in this node, uh, you have a linked list and you're like, hey, I wanna look up uh, the next letter I'm trying to find is D. Uh, great, yeah, I'm gonna go look down this linked list and I find B, no, I don't wanna keep on going D. Oh yeah, that's what I want. I'll go. So the thing stored in the list would actually be a pair. It would be a single letter and the associated subtree, so. Okay, so yeah, I can use linked list, um, an array, uh, so a list or an array. Um, hash table, I could use a binary search tree, I guess, if I wanted to, uh, no reason why not. So, okay. Um, the one other thing I want to point out, though, is if I'm making this data structure, I'm not going to just have an array at each node. So I'm going to, I'm going to go back and again use this in my mental model. I'll say array, but I mean any of those other data structures as well. Okay. So yeah, I have an array. Um, by the way, if you look at this, can you go and tell me what's the one word I have that does not start with C? Well, we can look at that and Sure enough, you start up at the root. I guess the root corresponds to the empty string. I've you know, used no characters at all to get to the root, okay. Uh, and now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, if I had a C, I would follow that node down. If I had an E, oh, okay, so yeah, I can go ahead and follow that E node. Where is it, over here? Yeah, I can go follow there. Uh, and now I'm sitting here. There's only one letter that follows the E. I'll, I'll, all the words following here start with, I didn't label it, but it would, I guess it would be A, B, so. E, B, and then E, B, B, eb. So even though I didn't label A, B, C, D, you can sort of still tell making it down to this node would mean you have to get there by E, B, B. Um, there's one other piece of information like I was starting to say uh, at each node. Hey, what I need to, I need to worry about the fact that, hey, if you come down here, you reach here, cab is a word, but C, A, B, B isn't a word. That's not one of the words we stored, C-A-B-B. There's things following that use that C-A-B-B, um, but C-A-B-B itself, and here they've colored them. So, da, da, da. what's our cabbage while I'm there? Okay, so yeah, I need to know that C-A-B-B is not, a C-A-B is a word, but C-A-B-B is not. A, B, that's, this is a node only used on its way down to subnodes. This is a node that could be stopped. So I guess I need one extra Boolean, one extra bit at each node, which here they represent as a color, um, either green or white. Um, so yeah, one bit saying, hey, is 
the way that I reach this node is that itself an entire key. And so, yeah, I need a few things in there to make this a node is not just an array, it'll be an array and one extra bit. Okay, an array of tries. A try would be a, a, a node, which is a single bit and an array of tries. Yeah, okay. Uh, and again, I'm just sort of viewing this as a set of words of words either in the set or not. But if you want to do something more like, hey, we have a word and associated value, you could do that as well. Instead of just storing a single bit with this node, store the associated value. If cab is associated with the, the value 17, you could be storing 17 rather than just a green, a bit saying color of the screen. So, okay. Um, so that's the, the main ideas I want to talk about tries and think about how to implement them. And so I think I just have a few homework questions about, uh, hey, here's a try, here's some things, uh, draw it out, see what it looks like, and then tell me exactly how many bytes do you of memory do you use given uh, various um, implementations, like using an array or a hash table or something like that. Choose some implementation, count out the bytes you need for your linked list or Bytes you need for your hash table or something like that. So, okay. Um, but yeah, it's a clever idea. Again, a prefix tree is another word for that. Uh, you can also look up suffix trees and other variants on this. Um, but it's a nice way to say, hey, I have a whole bunch of words. If there's a lot of overlap, then we might be getting a, a savings uh, on the overhead. Now, of course, you have to... Uh, be a little bit careful with that, the savings. Gosh, when every pointer is eight bytes on a 64-bit machine, yeah, gosh, you, you're not gonna be saving a lot if each of these pointers takes another eight bytes. Um, get a lot of sharing. Um, you don't have to use letters. You can use, you can use uh, chunks of letters. I'm thinking now if, if I have a DNA string, I might have Gosh, every clump of three codons. My, I only have four letters, uh, or five or six or whatever biology has in DNA these days. But yeah, there's only four different base pairs. So I have these long strings of only four letters. Um, and I want to know if a certain protein is in a database or not, or in a set of, uh, in a genome. Um, and I might store three bases at a time. It turns out three bases at a time is a codon, and that has a certain meaning. I might even be able to store more at a time uh, as well. Or I'm going to go the other way. I could go ahead and say, hey, I just have some binary data. I have a bunch of arbitrary objects I want to store as sets. I can go ahead and have a, use this try idea, but I'm not going to have 26 children. I'm only going to have two children, zero and one. And I'm going to look at the actual serialized bit pattern of my object and make my try based on that. And again, yeah, it may or may not, depending on how many objects you have and how much sharing you can really get out of it. Uh, in this example shown here, yeah, we're probably not going to win anything. We need a lot of words to really, we need a lot of sharing to have a win over all that, sharing all those those representations uh, before it really becomes helpful. Um, I will go and go back here. Oops, that's not what I wanted. There are other algorithms here on the same page. I'm just going to mention real quick um, a compact try. And we'll see how that looks a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and put in some of those same words, cat. I'm just going to make a string, just that one string, OK? Because, um, you know, we, we sort of lose, a try loses if we have a long chain of letters that doesn't have any branching going off of it. And like CAT right now is such a string. Uh, and if I want to put in cab, it's going to be a little bit smart. It's going to go ahead and say CA is already there. And I'm, on, I'm going to keep this a node to say, hey, if you reach this node, you found CA. Okay. Um, and then if you want to go further, you can go further from there. And if we want to go ahead and have, you know, cats plural, um, put that in. Uh, Cabby was one of the things we had here. I can go speed up this animation speed a bit. You can go through and look at yourself and see the different things. Um, and we can go ahead and put in, so now if we go ahead and put in cabbage now, we're going to say, hey, C, A, B, and then after that B, we can go ahead and, uh, we had to keep this as a separate node, 
uh, why? Because we need to note that the cab, I couldn't just have C A and then B B I E because I need to know that hey, that single B, that's a, a complete word, but C A B B I isn't. Okay. And so you can look at this, see this, and it kind of makes sense, I think, when you look at how what it's doing. It's like, hey, this is kind of a clever idea. Yeah, okay. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, so uh, that's another variation on tries that can help uh, help us out when we are otherwise our strict try would have lots of uh, a, a long empty run in between it. We just collapse those long empty runs basically is what we're doing here. So, okay. Uh, should I put in cats up? Sure. Just because I can think of a word starts that adds on there. And I think we'll just get a UP at the bottom. Yeah, single UP. And all cat, cats, and cats up are all words, but katsu is not. Okay. So that's all I'm going to say for now.